Give me an example of the friction that happens around PhD entrepreneurs in the bio medical space. Beyond just entrepreneurship too, but really the friction about um, uh, academia versus industry and uh, kind of the traditional expected path for, uh, for scientists, uh, for PhD scientists is, you know, just like your mentors in the PhD program, you're going to go on that same path and I uh, go into research and um, not be motivated by, you know, financial motives, but just, just to have them, um, uh, the desire to, to learn and discover and uh, be the primary motivation. So that's the perspective of academics and they see financial incentives getting involved and, um, just traditionally that mindset has been that that's a, you know, a, it's just a different unfamiliar world to the path that the people who train PhD students are familiar with. Um, but at the same time, there's also some little bit of probably distrust of, of motives historically, you know, kind of across the, the table. Um, but, you know, I, I was aware of that going in and, uh, there was a rotation program, which is great. And in, in the, in the program I was at, we were able to rotate with three or four different, uh, labs and, uh, over the course of the year before picking one to join for the, the remainder of our, our years in the PhD. And uh, I just kind of went into that with, um, just really being transparent and not, not hiding anything at all and saying, these are my goals. These are my motives. Uh, and you know, I'm, I would love to, to come in and, and work hard and, but I also would, would expect, um, support or alignment if I'm uh, going to work with you in, in terms of, um, you know, supporting this quote unquote, non-traditional uh, career path, which is actually becoming more and more popular now in the, in the scientific world, but that's, that's a different conversation. So, so then you, you, you graduated, what, what next, how did you go right into entrepreneurialism? Did you start? Did you do anything in between? How did you formulate to, to what you're doing today? How'd you get, how'd that come to be? I, I was continuing to, uh, kind of sharpen the shot sharpen the saw, uh, during the, the program as well. Um, T-shaped skill sets. That's something that, um, some mentors that I've had have, have really emphasized and that now at Genial, we emphasize and. Uh, candidates that we look to hire too. So what I mean by that is, uh, you, people talk about, you know, whether it's better to be a generalist or to be a specialist and developing that T-shaped skill set. Well, the top of the T being wide represents being a generalist, having that generalist perspective, but also having a specific area, the, the depth of the T uh, that you can come in with a, you know, tangible, hard skill set and, and contribute and so that was a focus. So for me, the PhD, I knew I was going to get that depth, but I wanted to make sure I was still able to, to, to keep kind of increasing my breadth at the top of the T. And so I, I was fortunate to get connected with a, uh, grassroots, um, innovation organization called InVenture in Houston. This is a uh, focused on the life science space and, and they, they basically were, were founded on the premise about 10 years ago that. Uh, Houston, as I mentioned, has the world's largest medical center, a ton of research talent, but at least at that point in time, there was virtually nothing in terms of a um, biomedical industry, medical devices, pharma. Yeah, hardly just very, very minimal industry presence, not much industry, not much entrepreneurship. Uh, so the, the, the talent in Houston, huge talent pool all focused on academia. Naturally, a lot of them are interested in entrepreneurship, starting companies, innovation, and um, kind of in the, in the commercial space. So, uh, the group was formed and, and by the time I got involved with them, they had a consulting operation up and running and, um, I, uh, was, uh, did an internal project with them on business development. And they asked me to, to lead their, uh, commercial consulting program for a year. And so, so that gave me experience in terms of managing teams. Um, we had a uh, 40 consultants at the, the kind of the peak when I was with them and got recurrent contracts with fortune 500 companies as well. And so kind of staying busy, moonlighting on this, um, you know, with this consulting program that, that really helped to kind of round out my skill set a bit and 